What is up, YouTube? Dots Gaming here, and today I will be going over all of the current classes in Spellbreak, a new upcoming Battle Royale game. If you have not seen my informational video on Spellbreak and the types of features it will have, I would recommend checking out the video linked in the description below. But today I'm going to be going over the classes in depth and what the current build and the current alpha of Spellbreak has for their classes. I just want to show you guys what you can expect from the different classes when you come into the game and what their bonuses are going to offer you. So the first one we have here is Bulwark. Now, all of these uh, all of these classes have four different, now Spellbreak calls them scrolls. So they're basically kind of like talent tiers and different things that you can get and they give you different bonuses. Um, but one of them is like a passive that you start off with right off the bat, and that's always going to be the first one listed here. And the other three you can acquire throughout the game through acquiring skill points through that are spread out throughout the map. So if you get a skill point, you can get another scroll from your class, or you can do it every single time you enter in a new circle. You're going to get another skill point so that you can invest another point in a scroll. And you can have two classes selected per game. And whenever you get a skill point to invest in a scroll, you're going to have to choose between the two classes and which which you want to which direction you want to go. So let's say I chose Bulwark and Conduit. It will give me one of the three options from Conduit at random and one of the three options from Bulwark at random, and I have to choose which one I want. So every game, your build's going to be slightly different, even if you choose the same two classes each time. But Today, I do just want to go over what the classes bring to the table so you can help, you know, kind of decide what you want to play yourself. Now, I do, I am going to get a lot of questions. What is the best? What is the best? What is the best? And the one thing I've noticed as Spellbreak has gone through its iterations is that really it's not a one size fits all solution. As far as I've been able to tell, everyone pretty much kind of has their preferences on what they like. Some people are better with certain gauntlets. Some people are better with certain classes than others. And the cool thing is that it's really about finding what play style and what individual classes you like the best and what really works for you. So I enjoy that aspect of the game very, very much. I'm sure no matter what, there will be something that's slightly overperforming than others, but for the most part, from what I've been able to tell so far through playing Spellbreak, you can really choose what you like and what you enjoy. So now, now that I've gotten all that out of the way, we will actually move into the classes. So the first one we have is Bulwark, and Bulwark's really kind of focus high, uh, highly on close range combat. And the first perk that you get is Fortify. So if you ever have any armor, you regenerate five armor every 10 seconds. So you, anytime you have armor on your character, you will continually regenerate armor, which is really, really helpful for making sure that your armor gets regenerated in between fights. You also have Inner Peace, which after taking damage, regenerate 40% of that damage over 20 seconds, but any further damage taken stops this regeneration. You also have Manivore, which gives you 30% of damage done to HP is taken for mana instead. And we also have Transference, which you gain armor equal to 20% of damage done to the target's armor. So these are the different perks you get from Bulwark. And as you rank up these perks, so these are like the rank ones. So as you gain other ranks in these perks throughout the game, so let's say you invest two or three skill points into the Manivore scroll, this number will be even, you know, th this, this scroll will be even more powerful than it is at rank one. We also have Conduit, which is going to focus more heavily on your lightning damage. And the first one we have is Lightning Fast, which increases your speed by 20%, but breaks briefly when you attack or take damage. You also have Arc Flash, which gives your lightning bolts a 25% chance to leave behind a ball of lightning that strikes nearby players. We also have Charged Rune, where after you're using your rune, you fire arcs of lightning toward your nearest target for 20 damage, and this has a 5-second cooldown. We also have Lightning Rod, where we become immune to lightning storms and gain 15 mana every single time we are struck by one. We also have Crack Shot, which allows us to deal damage, high damage at a long range. So our first one is Empower, which allows us to deal 30% more damage with a single spell. After casting, it takes 10 seconds to become empowered again. We also have Armor Piercing, which gives us 20% of our damage, ignoring the target's armor, so we get Armor Pen. And we also have High Velocity, which increases our high projectile speed by 30%. And we have Steady Aim, which after standing still for 4 seconds, we increase our damage by 20%. We also have Frostborn, which is going to augment if you choose to go a Frost route and use a Frost Gauntlet. This is going to really, really improve that a lot. So our first one is Cold Snap. Every 30 seconds, you set your over armor to 50, and it shatters after you take any damage. So it'll basically kind of help when someone jumps on you to mitigate that incoming damage right off the bat. We also have Chilling Effects, which means on while on ice, mana costs are reduced by 50%. So the Frost Gauntlet will leave a trail of ice behind it, and while you're on that trail of ice, you will have reduced mana cost. You also have Frozen Alacrity, which you're Increases the sprint speed on that ice path that I was just talking about by 100%, and you no longer slip on that ice. 
other people who don't have this perk will slip on ice. You also have Tundra, which will increase your Blizzard size and duration, which is the sorcery for the Frost Gauntlet by 50%. We also have Pyromancer, which is going to obviously focus more towards fire. And one of my favorite traits in the game, Phoenix, is Rebirth. You resurrect when you're exiled with 50% HP, but only once. So if you do get killed throughout a fight, you will be resurrected with 50% HP, but this can only happen once per game. We also have Born of Fire, which you become immune to your fireball explosions, and you instead heal for 4 HP every 2 seconds while you stand in fire, which is super, super cool. We also have Ignite, so players can be set on fire, and they have a dot placed on them as well. And you also have Lasting Burn, which fireballs will leave puddles of fire that last for five seconds. We have Scavenger, which is going to focus more on looting and finding items throughout the map. So chests that you find will contain one additional rare or better item. You also have Appraise, which is items within 50 meters are highlighted. You have Finest Wares, so when your inventory and equipment slots are full, you lower your rune cooldown by 5% and decrease the cast time by 10% and reduce all incoming damage by 10%. And then the final perk is Thirst Quencher, so picking up a new potion gives you an extra of that type and you consume potions 15% faster. Our next class is Scholar, with the first scroll being updated translation, so you decrease rune cooldowns by 30%. We have Careful Study, so targets hit you hit or outline for 5 seconds. And our next one is Runic Inspiration, so after using a rune, we decrease you and your nearby teammates' rune cooldown by 25% for 5 seconds. And Intense Learning instantly fills a rune recharge upon taking 40 total damage. So as you can see, Scholar is really, really focused around not only outlining targets, but making your runes and your utility skills even better and have them have lower cooldowns. This is a personal favorite of mine as well. We also have Stone Shaper, which is going to obviously augment your... Uh, stone attacks so the first one is sunder so targets lose an additional 20 percent armor when damaged we also have earth's mantle so if damage would exile you instead you're sent to one hp and this can occur not more uh can occur more than once every 90 seconds so you have to, a 90 second cooldown on that so flash to stone sets your armor and max uh your armor and max armor to 200 as opposed to the 100 that you start with uh excuse me the 75 that you start with but max hp is set to 10. We also have Rock Slide, so we increase the length of Earth Spell by 15%, but decreases the damage by 30% and makes it bounce off of obstacles instead of colliding, so it just changes your Earth Sorcery a little bit. We also have Tempest, which is going to make your Wind Attacks and uh, Sorcery is even better. So you have Updraft, which makes you immune to Whirlwinds, and you launch Skyward when entering them. You also have Slipstream, which gains 10 additional mana and max mana every second while in the air. Uh, 10 seconds after touching the ground, your max mana resets to normal. We also have Squall, which for every spell cast in the air increases spell damage by 6% up to a maximum of 30%, and after touching the ground, all stacks are lost. Our final one is Sudden Gust, so after being in the air for one second, Sorceries uh, sorcery cooldowns are 100% faster. So while you're airborne, your sorceries will come off cooldown incredibly quickly. We also have Toxicologist, which is going to really augment your poison gauntlet a lot. So Corrosion targets you hit lose 5 armor every 5 seconds for 15 seconds. Bubonic Bounce, so your poison cloud uh, sorcery will bounce one time and leave an extra cloud behind it. We also have Spreading Sickness, so targets take an additional 20% damage from your attacks over the next 10 seconds if they have no armor. And Vanishing Mists become immune to poison clouds and gain stealth for 3 seconds when you enter one. Our final class is Zealot. This is not tied to any gauntlet specifically, but this is kind of like a, a feast or famine type of class that will really, really reward early aggressive gameplay. So Frenzy, so when you're at or below 35 HP, you increase your damage by 25% and sprint speed by 20%. You have Blood Armor, so every three seconds you gain three armor but lose two health and stops at maximum armor or five or less health. You have Penance, which if you take more than 40 damage to HP in two seconds, your further incoming damage is reduced by 30% for two seconds. And then the last one, which is the most, you know, the main reason people love to take Zealot is Vivisection. Upon exiling an enemy, you have an 80% chance for that person to drop a skill point. So it really, really helps reward early and aggressive gameplay. So that is it for me today, guys. I just wanted to show you all the current iteration of the classes in Spellbreak for this current alpha build. So if you guys found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you left a like on it. Any comments or questions about the various classes, please leave them below. And for more great Spellbreak content as well as ESO and Dark Souls content, I'd appreciate it if you hit that sub button as well as hit the bell to keep notifications on. So I want to thank you guys so much for stopping by. I very much appreciate it. As always, I'm Dots Gaming, and I'll see you all in the next video.